Hello, Fur and the Fan friends, and welcome to today's episode. We have a lot to cover today. We're going to be talking about our axle. We're going to compare it to our magazine from the 1940s. We're going to be talking about adding a floor and the dilemma which I've been racking my brain over for probably a week, week and a half of how we're going to do it because I want to change it slightly from what came originally to make it better. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But first, let's go ahead and let's take a look at our axle. In the Popular Mechanics 1940 February edition, under our midget trailer plans, it talks about the axle and what they want you to buy. It says, first buy from a wrecking yard, a standard 1924 Chevrolet front end axle, springs and shackles, and a pair of 1930s discs of the same era. Make sure that the axle you get has not been sprung or otherwise damaged. Cut the tie rod, flatten the ends and bolt to the axle after aligning the wheels. Hmm. That's pretty interesting. Let's take a look at our trailer and see how much it matches this. So looking at our axle here, I do not know for sure what the year is. I know when we ground off all the crud and stuff before painting, we found a stamped number on it. That very well could possibly tell us what era this axle came from, but we're not too concerned about that. Uh, we know that it was pre-1940s. Assume it's from the 30s or maybe even the 20s, like it said here in our magazine. The original way that this axle was, these leaf springs here were actually connected down here. There's four bolts here and it was actually connected. So to make this trailer, they slid our leaf springs over about six inches. And then that also gave them the chance to raise it up another four inches to give it a little more height. Now, let's read again what it said in our magazine. After you buy the axle, it says that you need to cut the tie rod and flatten the ends and bolt to the axle. Well, looky here. I think you can see that. Maybe you can't. I'll bring you in closer. See right here, here's one of the tie rods that goes back to the disc. Um, these, this used to be off of a, an axle off of the front end of a vehicle and so this wheel would actually turn and so they needed to put a tie rod here and one back here in order to get the wheel to stand straight. That's pretty cool reading about what they want you to buy and then we actually have it right here on our trailer. It's a pretty neat looking assembly in there. floor was made out of solid wood, three-quarter inch, true three-quarter inch, not what you get today, and it was various widths from this 10 inch down to, oh, I'd say maybe four inch boards. So our boards, the original boards, ran from wall to wall, and there were cracks between each of the boards, letting in air and also it wasn't as structural as it could be. Also the other problem with this is if you had just one layer of tile on top, it could crack between each of the boards. Ours had two layers of tile, so there really wasn't much of an issue of cracking, but it's still pretty spongy and so it was soft when you walked on it. I thought about reusing our boards because I wanted to keep this trailer as original as possible. However, if you look at them, maybe a little closer look, you can see it's full of cracks and checks. It's a little bit soft here. There's rot. It's actually kind of cupped on the end. It's got a little bit of a smell to it. Um, we'd have to grind off all this original glue and tile, which is not a very big deal. But, you know, with so many cracks in it, I think, I just don't think it's worth it. So, and so that's what kind of left me with a bit of a dilemma. 
Now the magazine shows us plainly that there were deck boards. They were three quarter inch by three inch, but even though ours varied in size, it still was done with deck boards. In a blueprint that we was able to pick up soon after we bought our trailer, I also found it is showing where they've used three quarter inch plywood as a floor. That is for the alternate frame. And this frame actually is more like ours. Um, the one up above that shows the wood planking is all wood. We know we can't get away with that nowadays. There's no way you can do an all wood frame and actually have it go down the freeway and stay together. So we have the all wood with planks. We have this one with a steel frame and plywood. And then we have what I want to do to it. So the first way we could do it is just like there was originally. We have our steel frame and then we just put planks across it. These are all about five inches. That's one way we could do it. Just keep it original. The other way we could do it, put planks across it so it has the look from underneath of the original plan. And the other is just to set a nice half inch thick piece of plywood on there tile. So it'll have a nice smooth floor surface for our tile. There's only one problem with this. I want to add insulation. There won't be a lot of insulation, but I think a vapor barrier from the ground up to where we're sleeping will actually help keep it a little bit warmer or in my case, a little bit cooler. So what I want to do is add floor planks. Now our original floor planks were a true three quarters of an inch. These are a half inch, so we have a quarter to spare. Then I want to add a half inch of insulation, ISO insulation, and on top of that, a half inch piece of plywood. That way we get the original look. We don't have the cracks of these boards to come up through our tile surface. We'll get a little bit of an R value with this insulation. It's only 2.7 but it's enough to keep some of the moisture and coolness from coming up through the floor, I think. And then we'll have our nice smooth surface for our tile. That gives us an inch and a half, so that will raise our floor three quarters of an inch. I was concerned about this because we have to be very, very careful of how we change things because our outer aluminum skins, they're already cut. And so we have to be aware of our openings. I think we'll be okay. Um, what I'm going to do is the floorboards will be screwed to our frame here, and then our walls will actually sit on top of this floor here, and our insulation and our plywood will just butt up against the wall right in this area here. So we're not really raising our panels, we're not raising our walls or anything. We're not changing any of the sizes. So the original aluminum skins will still fit properly. Is that a good plan, you think? We get the same look as the original, yet we enhance it just a little bit with insulation, make it a little bit stronger, and we'll have a nice floor surface when we're done. So let's get started on installing the plank parts of our floor. This is gonna involve a couple of things. One, obviously we need to cut them to length, and two, we are going to cut grooves in each of the ends that go the length of the wood. That way we'll be able to join the two pieces of wood together and it'll have a spline down the center so it'll make it a nice strong joint. We won't be gluing the spline in place, it'll be a floating spline, but that way the floor will be more solid. You know one thing you might notice as we build this trailer, I don't do anything simple. I have to do it the hardest way. Seems to be what I do with most of my projects, but you know what? I want them to be strong and I want them to last. So I do things the hard way so you don't have to. The wood that we have selected to make our cross boards from is redwood. We decided on redwood because number one, it's going to be exposed to the elements underneath the trailer. Uh, number two, it's very lightweight. And number three, it's strong and durable. What we need to do now is cut our boards at 68 inches long. That will match the original width.
But before we cut our boards to length, I'm gonna trim a little bit off of each end because our ends here are a little bit rough. And we have a little bit extra length, so we're able to do that. Double check our measurement for 68. And we'll make our final cut. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of our lumber into the correct widths and we'll be back. There now isn't that starting to look nice. We've cut six of our long planks at 68 inches. Now we need to fill in the wood between the tires. And what we did to make sure that we have the exact same length, we went ahead and we kept our original wood so we can keep it as a pattern. We need to make the next five or six at 45 inches. Let's continue to do that. Well, there it is. We have all of our floor boards cut to width. Now we're going to have to, oh, is our shop dog gonna stop in? Everybody, this is Philip. He's our shop dog. Say hello, Philip, to the camera. Yeah, good boy. So we have all of our pieces of wood now cut to width. As you can see, we're going to have to trim some of them out around the tires and whatnot. And what we're going to do is we're actually gonna go look at the original wood. Careful, Philip. We're going to go look at our original pieces because I believe on the, this front piece here, I've got to cut a bevel on the front and on the back, I've got to cut a bevel also. That way when the alumina comes down and curves, it'll tuck underneath the wood floor beautifully. To so show more of what I've been talking about as far as putting a chamfer on the front edge of this wood, let's go ahead and take a closer look. So what I've done is I placed the original board back on the trailer. And as you can see right here, there's this little chamfer of like 45 degrees. We need to cut that into our new piece so that when our aluminum wall comes down, it'll tuck right into this corner. So I added the chamfer edge to the front board. Then I aligned each board along the trailer frame and I found out that actually the boards fit beautifully between the front piece of steel here and in front of the tire here. Philip's going to help us today. Right, Philip? The boards fit really well between the frame here and to this edge, to this back edge here. We have one little problem. It's not a big problem, but we'll need to fix it. If you add these last three boards, then we end up with a gap of about two inches. So along here in the back, we have our edge here that runs really good with our steel frame. Then we have our spacer here for our other board that would fit in here. And then this board, and then right here, there is about maybe an inch, inch and a quarter space. We can't have that. So I think what we're gonna do, instead of having just one little itty bitty piece, I think we'll cut two pieces so that they're this big, and then it'll be a filler, so about half and half. And that should fill in this corner nicely. We also need to put a chamfer on this edge here like we did the front, so that when the alumina comes wrapping around, it'll have something to screw to. Well, I went ahead and I cut these two boards here at equal width. Instead of having one tiny one, now we have two kind of at a medium size. So it fits beautifully here. We have a full size, a little bit smaller, a little smaller, and our full size piece. So I think we are ready now to cut our splines in between each piece of wood, and then we'll be able to bolt it down. Now that we have all of our 
planks on the trailer and cut to size. We're going to put a spline between the two of them. What that means is I've cut a groove in the wood, as you can see on the end. And we're going to cut a spline there and it'll fit between the two pieces of wood. Therefore, it'll make this joint just a little bit stronger with the two pieces butted up together. Also, it'll keep water from splashing up in between the floor and the insulation. And there's a whole bunch of good things. And I just wanted to make a fun joint here. So we'll continue with the rest of them and get back with you. A little bit of an update. For the last several hours, I have been installing our planks. Last time I left you, I showed you that I had cut some grooves in our board here. And we were inserting these splines in order to help make this deck not work as individual boards, but actually as one solid mass. The process, although it's taken a little bit of time, it's going quite well. I'm putting one nut and bolt in the center of each of our boards on each end. That way there is a little bit of room for expansion and contraction so that it won't crack our wood. Our video is getting a little bit long, but I wanted to show you the process of our deck. I'm going to continue to nut and screw and bolt and attach our boards to our steel frame and we'll get back with you next time. Next time, a little heads up is going to be quite exciting. That is when we start the glue laminating process or the setup for the process of glue laminating our teardrop shell. That's going to be exciting. I don't know exactly how that's going to turn out. So I hope you'll join us next time and I guess we'll learn together.